section of Canvas. All right. Um, today we're going to do section one dash nine, which I think they call the coordinate plane, and I'm just going to call it. We're going to call it graphing because that's what we're going to do a lot of graphing. Uh, first chapter will be graphing. So it's just a, some terminology you probably are familiar with. When we're dealing with the, what I'll call the XY plane, the Euclidean plane, we're kind of we're going to be talking a little bit about geometry. I hope some of you remember some of your geometry. Uh, there's some terminology here. Uh, of course, this is the, this is the line, this is the x-axis. It's a number line. This is the y-axis. It's also a line. Uh, you 
could you know, draw some lines like this, which is kind of shaded in. So this is an area where it's not math, it's kind of artistic creativity. As long as it's clear what we're talking about. Um, if you want to graph a line, well, let's say x, y, using set notation, because again, I'm talking about the set of points on this plane. Here, I'm saying x, y, such that, we'll say y equals 1. So if this just has to be 1, we graph it this way, we'll just draw a line. And by this, we need the set of points on this line. We might do something simpler. We might just write the equation by this one. It's all pretty familiar so far. Again, this is just, we want to all be on the same page. We want to have <coughs> the same uh, vocabulary. So when it comes up, we know what we're talking about. All right. Uh, I didn't really emphasize this here, but I want to emphasize this line because it's part of this set. Now, if I was to do something a little different, I'm going to introduce two things here, such that y, absolute value of y is less than 2. Absolute value of y is less than 2. So like 3, that's not in there. 1 is in there, minus 1 is in there, minus 3 isn't in there. So, I didn't say anything about x, so any x is valid. So let me, let me draw a line here at 2, but I'm going to write it as a dashed line. Again, this is, this is a typical convention. And then we can see kind of shading these points inside here. Uh, the convention of using a dotted line reflects the fact that 2 is not on the line. Right? Everything up to 2. This is not, you know, if you do these things, you have a computer program, it's going to look nice. It'll be much more accurate than if you do it by hand. But we're, we're just trying to do a representation here. We're not, uh, we're not turning this into some math journal where it has to be, it to look exact. So, if you happen to have graph paper and you're doing this on paper, that'll make it look a little better, but not necessary. See, all my diagrams here will be without any graph paper on the board. I can't get away with it, so you can get away with it. Okay. Um, all right, so having, uh, having a plane, XY plane, to graph things on, and we can points on this line. One thing we might want to know is the distance between two points. So let's call a x1, y1, that's its coordinates, and b we'll call x2, y2. And uh, 
know there's a line segment between them, and we'd like to know the length of that line segment. So how do we figure that out? Well, the way we do it is we create a right triangle here. We can tell right away that this distance, uh, this leg, the height of the triangle in this direction is going to be x1 minus x2. And the distance in this direction is going to be, is that right? Yeah, y2 minus y1. Or if you want to not worry about you know, which of these we're talking about, you can say absolute value. So now we have the two sides of the triangle. And how are we going to find the length of the hypotenuse? What's the magic formula? Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. Pythagoras. Well, that tells us that in a right triangle, a squared plus b squared having nothing to do with my point name, C squared. So we have x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. That's our distance squared. But we don't want the distance squared. We want the distance. So we'll just find the square root. And we have a name for this formula. We just call it the distance formula. Now, we're not going to have to worry about this today, but in the future, when you have an x y and a z coordinate. We have two points out here in the world. X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2. You can just extend the distance formula to be squared plus y1 minus y2 squared plus y2 squared. This is uh, sometimes called a metric. get a different 
metric, slightly different metric. Okay, you don't need to know that. Yes. Here's A. Uh, so, how would we use this distance formula? This is a simple example. At two points, five, seven, two, three. Want to know the distance between them? So, five minus two squared. Sounds more practical. Uh, you have two points. A is one, A two, B eight, nine. Well, we can graph these. Let's take a look. The question is, which is closer to C, which is five comma three? So you can graph it and use your ruler. See if that helps. If they're close, it might depend on how accurately you draw when you get the right answer. But we can analytically figure this out, right? Uh, 1 minus 5 is minus 4 squared is 16. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 squared is 5. Okay, that's the distance. AB, AC, EC would be squared of 8 minus 5 is 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 3 is 6, 6. So we have the square root of 41 and the square root of 45. So this is the larger number. A is closer to C. I mean, you might have some, you know, much more complicated problem. It might be, you might be writing a computer program and you have coordinates for cities and you want to try and figure out a route. Somewhere 
hopefully inside your, your mind. Quadratic formula. Okay. Uh, another piece of information from geometry. We have point A and point B. A line segment connected, connecting them. And sometimes what we want to know is where the, the midpoint is. Anybody, anybody here do constructions with a compass and a straight edge? And you remember, yeah. Like, do you remember how you find a midpoint with just a compass? Okay, good, yeah, all right. Some people remember. There's a trick where you, uh, you take your compass Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 You're absolutely right. Your compass has to be. <laughs> see, that's my my compass. You have to kind of. Well, I guess my fingers aren't long enough. You draw two points that uh, intersect and then you draw a line and it bisects, and then you do a little proof to prove that you know why is this the midpoint. But in, uh, in this class, we're going to go back to our right triangle. We can split this in half. We can split this in half. And by similar triangles, we can prove that this distance is half of these. I think that's how we do it. In any event, you end up with the formula. You have x1, y1, x2, y2. You find the midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2, the average. That's this, uh, that's this, this distance, this coordinate. And y is y1 plus y2 over 2. That's this coordinate, and you end up with this coordinate, which is the midpoint. So that's the midpoint theorem. All right, so you might have a simple problem like this. What's the midpoint of 9, 3, and negative 3, 5? Well, pretty easy. 9 plus negative 3 over 2, 3 plus 5 over 2, and then you just do some math. So we 3 minus 3 is 4. Okay, that's the midpoint theorem. Midpoint formula.
Okay, so I'm sure some of you remember your high school days in geometry fondly. And some of you do. And you remember we used to do proofs, geometric proofs. And if you were lucky at some point, gave you a subject called analytic geometry, where instead of just doing what Euclid did, measuring lines and comparing them, you could use a coordinate plane and you could, uh, you could show things. So this problem. So, uh, it's actually a couple ways we can prove this. One is if we show these two lines have the same distance and these two lines have the same distance from each other. That, uh, that would prove it. But again, if the midpoints <laughs> are the same, that means they bisect each other. So let's, let's try the Try the midpoint theorem on this. Right, so the midpoint of 2, 7, and 4, 4 would be 2 plus 4 over 2, and 7 plus 4 over 2, 6 over 2 is 3, 11 over 2 is 11 over 2. Look at the midpoint here. So we have 5 plus 1 over 2. And we have 2 plus 9 over 2. What do we get? 6 over 2 is 3. Six over 11 over 2. Aha! So the midpoints of these are the same, therefore they bisect each other. Therefore, it's a parallelogram. So that's uh, 
that's another way to do a geometric proof analytically. Point one, two, 
to 0. Then all we really need to do is graph two more points. So let's say 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2. That's going to be one side. And I can say 0. Absolute value of 0 minus 2 is value of minus 2, which is 2, so 0, 1, 2. So that's how you would graph a linear absolute value. I suspect this uh, homework assignment is going to be a, a bit of graphing. Uh, let me uh, make an aside. Uh, I don't think people should be made people should be made to do difficult, complicated, error-prone things when there's technology available. And the technology available for these kinds of graphs is you've got, you've got a calculator. Things 
that you know loosely you need and then tie together.
But of course, that would look much prettier if we just square both sides. So minus h squared plus y minus k squared r squared. Anyone seen that before? Uh, it's much simpler. The circle is at the origin. And it's got a radius of 1. And you just got x squared plus y squared equals 1. So, what could we do with that? ask a question like, what's the equation of a circle with center 2, negative 5, and radius 3? Well, it's just kind of a plug-in. x minus 2 squared plus y minus minus 5 squared equals 3 squared or x minus 2 squared plus 5 plus 5 squared equals 9. And there you have uh, a circle. Sometimes you have to work backwards. What if I said I've got a equation x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus 4x equals 4y equals 0. And uh, not even, I'm not even completely sure what that is. I think it's a circle. Does anyone recall how you go about putting it into that form we had?
computer programmers do this all the time. I, I, know, I know everyone out here is not a CS. Computer programmers these days seem to do this all the time. You have a project and you break it down, and then instead of writing a piece yourself, you go find out where you can get the other part. I'm going to use some stuff we, we look at today to work together to solve this. So 1, 8 and 5, negative 6 are endpoints of a diameter. I'm not going to graph them for real, but I'm just going to say, all right, so you've got diameter. So one of these is 1, 8. So we want the equation of this circle. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have a way to find this point. Yes, you were right, we do. <laughs> Midpoint. We just we saw the midpoint, right? Everybody, the midpoint there. So it's going to be one plus five over two, eight plus negative six over two. That's that. Six that's three. One. Ah, oh, we found the center. Okay, we're halfway there, right? Now we just need to find the radius. How are we going to find the radius? know it. Get a gold star for today. Uh, so I'm going to write down, first I'm going to write down some squares that you really should One way to think of these is 
that. We have our pattern. 100 plus 30 times 2, 60 plus 9, oh, 169. 14, same thing. 100 plus 80 plus 16. And, you know, these add, they don't come up so well. Just, you know, you can go on, maybe take another math class. That's a CS class. I think I already said, if you're in a CS major, you better, you better all know, know your twos. Right? Two, four, eight, 16. These all come up 32, 4, 28. You, know, you should know these numbers because you know I bought a computer with 128k RAM. No, not RAM. Gig. Should know all those twos. I'm just going to write write how far that I know that they've been useful. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 54, 128. 6, 12, and 24. All these you just get to know. Number 8, line 6. I don't know the rest. It's 8 something. 16k. I know we get 16k. K. We can just do that from here on. You really need to know these. If you're not a CS maker, my apologies for wasting your time. So you can conclude two, you know, con you know, converse things. One is if plugging in negative x to the an equation gives you the equation back, it's symmetric along this axis. If it's symmetric along this axis, it's going to be true. Now. Take a look at this equation. X equals y squared. This is just the same parabola on the side. But the same trick holds. I plug in x times minus y here. This is just 
what that tells us is if you can substitute minus y for y and get the same equation, now it's symmetric along the x-axis. Because we're again, we're just expanding these points. So the topic here, symmetry. Clearly, it doesn't have symmetry on either axis. But my exchange x, y, negative x, negative y, what happens? Well, this becomes negative y, this becomes negative x cubed, negative y becomes negative x cubed. And I can take away the minus y equals x cubed. So there's a symmetry here. Symmetry around the origin. We'll just call this origin symmetry. X, Y, and negative X, Y can be switched without changing. And this has a name, I guess, uh, put this over here. This is even function. This is called an odd function. Uh, we're going to learn more about functions in this class. Functions do not have to be either even or odd, but some are. And uh, there are certain properties of even and odd functions we'll learn about that we will find useful. Okay, so here's an actual problem. Uh, y equals x cubed minus 9x. And the question is, does this have any symmetry? Well, let's, let's try substituting minus x. If 
I change x to minus x and y to minus y, it's going to have this kind of symmetry about the origin. All right, that's section one nine, coordinate plane, graphing.